very convenient in terms of location. Um, so uh, transportation is not an issue here in Canada or in Ontario as well. So uh, we try to make it as convenient as possible for the students. The city itself, uh, we have a population of approximately 135,000 people. Uh, to us here in Canada, it's a medium-sized city. Of course, depends on where you are around the world. This could be a very big city or a super small city. Uh, we are rated as one of the 10 best places to live in Canada for new Canadians and also international students. Uh, one of the reasons is because the unemployment rate is amongst the lowest in Canada at around 3%. Uh, the city is surrounded by nature. So we do have a lot of canoeing, hiking trails, uh, hiking trails, rock climbing, countless parks for the students and to explore if that's what they're interested in. Uh, as I mentioned before, we're about an hour drive from Toronto, which is the biggest uh, metropolitan city here in Canada. We have a great uh, indie music scene as well for, and we're called the City of Music. So for those who are interested to explore that, that is also a possibility. For our students, the city transit pass is included as part of their tuition. So once they have their student card, they can ride the city bus for free. So if they're going out for the weekend, if they're going out for movies, for you know, a night out or anything like that, trans transportation city bus is included for the students. Some of the reasons to come to the University of Guelph. Number one, we are definitely one of the top tier universities here in Canada. Uh, we are considered a comprehensive university, so we are very um, strongly ranked with our undergrad programs, but we are also heavily involved in our grad and postgrad research. Uh, we are ranked number four this year, so we've been ranked consistently top five in Canada for comprehensive university for the past five to ten years. We have a great support for our students, so we have different associations, clubs, services to help not only our domestic students, but also our international students, making sure that they can succeed not only academically, but socially and just as a person as well, that they're happy and healthy when they are here on campus. Uh, one of our founding colleges is um, our veterinarian, so we have a lot of different types of animals on campus, uh, puppies being one of them. So a lot, of our, a lot of our students love the puppies that are on campus uh, and you see them pretty much all the time uh, throughout the year. Uh, food, so another founding college for us is agriculture. So we do grow a lot of our food locally here in campus. We have a team of executive chef who cooks for our students. Uh, we've been rated as the best campus food in Canada 10 years in a row. We understand that not only do you have to study uh, hard here in the university, but you also need to be fed very well, which is one of the reasons why we have, you know, the best food on campus in Canada. And overall, it, the Guelph is just a great city, like I mentioned before. Uh, it's very progressive, it's very safe and clean. It's one of the safest cities in Canada as well. Um, it's progressive, progressive in the sense that there is an international presence and it's growing bigger and bigger every day. So you or any of the students will never really feel homesick because you'll always have somebody from wherever you're from in the city of Guelph. So our motto is to improve life. So no matter if you're studying here as a student, if you're teaching here as a faculty, or if you're working here as staff as myself, uh, we all try to do things every day to improve life, whether it's having science breakthroughs or just little things that we can improve each other's life. And that's what we're trying to do here at the University of Guelph. Here's just a short clip, uh, a little brief introduction about what we offer at the university. Hopefully uh, you guys can see it properly and without too much lag.
We are the University of Guelph, and we are committed to improving life. So that's just a quick brief video in regards to what we offer. Uh, we'll now go into a little bit more about the different majors and different programs that we offer here at the university to give you an idea of what we can offer to our students. Uh, so we have 85 different majors and 12 different programs. Um, we have, like you can see on the list, anywhere from applied science, arts, to business, to computing, engineering, uh, to our veterinary science or, you know, environmental science and things like that, which I'll be breaking down a little bit more in the next few slides. So the first one is definitely Bachelor of Arts. Uh, this is one of the most, uh, with a different variety, I guess you can say, in terms of what we offer. Before I go into a little bit further, Anything you guys see with a red start right beside it, things like economics, international development, mathematical economics, political science and psychology, for example, for the Bachelor of Arts. That means the student have the option of applying into a co-op option. So these majors would have a regular non-co-op, which is generally four years, and a co-op option, which is either 4.5 or five years with a, with a co-op option. So for our Bachelor of Arts, um, as I said before, you have different range of um, majors that the student can get into. Um, you know, for those who are interested in getting into uh, the government, for example, uh, they might be interested in uh, environmental governance, they might be interested in political science, they might be interested in international development. Our psychology uh, is super competitive as well. So that's another um, hot demand, I guess you can say, major that's within the Bachelor of Arts. Uh, for those who are interested into getting to law perhaps afterwards, um, you can, a lot of students will go with philosophy or criminal justice and public policies, for example. But as you can see, really, uh, it depends on what the students is interested in uh, as we offer a wide range of uh, majors within Bachelor of Arts. Next one will be science. For our science, it's divided into biological and physical science. Uh, for science part, we are very strong in our animal science due to it's one of our founding colleges. So for students who are interested into getting, our, uh, getting into our doctors of uh, veterinary and science, uh, they would take things like uh, animal biology, uh, zoology, wildlife biology and conservation, or marine and freshwater biology, for example before they can apply into our doctor of uh, veterinary and science, of veterinary medicine. Um, for those who are into uh, perhaps just get into medical school, regular medical school afterwards, students are interested in things like biomedical science, biological science, neuroscience, uh, and things like that to help them prepare for medical school after uh, they graduate at the University of Guelph. Of course, that's not just limited to those options. You definitely have things like plant science, theoretical physics, you know, not nanoscience and things like that. So once again, it really de depends on what a student is interested in. One of the most popular ones for international students that we find is our Bachelor of Commerce, which is our business department. Um, as you can see, almost every single major would have a co-op option except for undeclared. Um, a lot of our international students are interested in things like management, hospitality and tourism management, accounting, for example. However, we do have a few special ones here at the University of Guelph, things like sport and event management, uh, real estate and housing, for example, or food and agricultural business that are pretty unique to us. Same thing for computing and engineering. As you can see, most of them would have a co-op option if the student decide to apply for that, except for the undeclared for a Bachelor of Engineering. Um, talking about engineering, you know, we have our regular computer engineering or mechanical engineering, but once again, we do have a few unique ones to us, our university, things like water resource engineering and uh, biomedical engineering, uh, for example, for those who are interested in the medical side plus the engineering side as well. Bioresource management, a science in agriculture and environmental science. Those, the environmental science especially has been a, recently a very hot topic just due to global warming and people being more aware of the, their surrounding environments. Uh, so a lot of our students have gone into, say for example, environmental economics and policies so they can work in the government after. 
or simply environmental science or uh, food management is also another big one uh, because shortage of food will be an issue coming up as we have more and more population in the near future. So that's another uh, popular one to go with for the students. Other degrees and programs that we offer, things like I mentioned, the Doctor of Veterinary Medicine, which is a professional degree. That's a seven-year degree, which is three-year undergrad and four-year doctors. But once you do graduate, you do get two degrees, which is your undergrad and your doctor degree, which then you can go on to become a veterinary medicine doctor if that's what you're looking to do. Um, for our Bachelor of Landscape Architecture, we're one of the two universities here in Canada that offers this degree which essentially allows the students to design anything outside except for buildings. So any of the green space that will be designed by the students. And our students has worked on uh, projects within the city of Guelph and surrounding cities as well. And also internationally, things like the Bellagio uh, front um, green space and things like that was designed by our students. Now, besides the majors that we offer, we also offer 56 different types of minors for our students. And this is essentially the cherry on top or the icing on the cake for students who are looking to be more well-rounded to uh, essentially expand their interest. So for example, a student could be taking um, could be taking business, for example, but they're really interested in German. So they can take German as a minor. Once they graduate, they'll have a major in business, minor in German. And if they do decide to move to Germany one day and start their own business, that is definitely a possibility. So as you can see with over 85 different type of majors and 56 different type of minors, really the combination is endless. It really just depends on what piques the student's interest and what they want to learn. Now I have briefly touched up on co-op education uh, previously. Uh, so essentially we are the third largest co-op university here in Ontario, providing over 3000 students with co-op opportunities each year. So co-op is generally uh, three to five paid co-op work terms. So it's not for free, uh, students do get paid for it. Uh, it does, like I mentioned before, extend your four year regular degree to 4.5 to five year, just because the extra co uh, paid co-op work terms. Um, as far as for salary, it's anywhere between 400 to 1,000 per week. Uh, it could be more, depending on your position. Uh, and the students, the, the major thing is the students do get to practice what they learned in the classroom at their workplace. For, their, for the students who are in co-op in their first year, we do have a co-op 1100 course, which helps the students uh, prepare for their job search. So essentially help them with their resume writing, help them with interview skills, and help them to see how to find the job that's suitable for them to prepare them uh, for their next step. And this also helps students to network, develop contacts, and build confidence in their field. They don't have to go into, into the same company for the whole three to five paid work terms. They can try different companies each work term to see what they really like in terms of location and work setting and things like that. So that once they do graduate, they have a better idea of what they want to get into. And on, on the left hand side, as you can see, we do have not only Canadian brands and Canadian companies that our students go with, but we do also have international companies that the students go with as well. So they're not just restricted locally for their co-op work terms. If they see something that is suitable for them in Europe, for example, or you know, back home or anywhere around the world, they're more than welcome to apply for it and use as their work term. Besides the co-op education, for those who are not in co-op education, for example, we also have other um, methods for the students to work and learn off and on campus. So things like uh, on-campus employment, work study, professional practice course, field courses, co-op um, education, community engagement, and things like that, that will help our students be engaged and get experience that they're looking for so that they're better prepared once they graduate from our university. As far as for finances, um, this was taken from our 2020 yearbook. Um, so essentially tuition, we're looking at anywhere between 24 to close to 34,000 Canadian, depending on what program they're going into. The compulsory fees is around 1,200 and also health insurance for international students is mandatory. So that's 636. 
Everything else is optional or case by case by the student. Uh, just because for residents, for example, it really depends on what type of residence they choose. If it's a single room, if it's a double room, triple room, or uh, you know, four people living together. So the more people living together, of course, that will lower your cost. Same thing for meal plan, uh, some eat more, some eat less. So it really depends on how much you are eating and that will determine what kind of meal plan you would get. Uh, textbook and personal expenses, we essentially just kind of averaged out. So on um, ballpark per year, we're looking at anywhere from 40 to close to 60,000 Canadian uh, for two semesters, one school year. However, we do have our entrance scholarship. So for entrance scholarship, the students do not have to apply for it. It's simply based on their average. So it's anywhere from 5,500 to 8,500 for the first year. If, they, if the students are able to maintain an 80% or more for year one, two, and three, or year one or two or three, then they will receive a $4,000 scholarship the following year. So essentially, if they are able to maintain 80% or more for all the three years in uh, year one, year two, year three, then including the entrance scholarship, they can essentially get one year tuition for free. And here's just a quick video of what a student stay would look like here at our university. So the previous video just kind of showcased a little bit about our campus. As you can see from this picture as well, uh, we have a lot of green space within our campus. Um, a lot of students like to use our campus and it's green space in the summer, uh, either just to hang out with us, you know, follow friends or work. The Wi-Fi is across the whole campus. So you'll see a lot of students in the summer will just sit at our front lawn, for example, and work on their uh, project and presentations or just hang out with friends. So next one I want to mention is our English programs. So we do realize that not all of our students, not all international students uh, could meet our English requirements. So we do have our English language programs to help those who cannot meet our English requirements uh, so that they can still come to our university and study at our university. So our English language program is in-house, so it's on campus, it's our own department, it's not a third party or anything like that. The students do, uh, do essentially study on campus and they can definitely live on campus if they go into our residence as well. So the first one is our integrated admissions pathway. Um, so this one is for certain specific majors. As you can see, it's for Bachelor of Arts. Any of the majors, including co-op for Bachelor of Arts. Bachelor of Commerce, Undeclared, or Bachelor of Science, Mathematical Science, and Environmental Geomatics. So, of course, the student must meet all academic requirements, except for English language proficiency. And the minimum English language proficiency for this, we're looking at IELTS of 5.5, or TOEFL of 56 or equivalent. So for this program, it is one year. Uh, within this one year, the student will be able to improve their English to a level where they can uh, go into our regular program for year one or year two. But not only are they studying English, they're studying or completing five courses towards their degree at the same time. So they're not really just studying English, they're also doing about 2.5 total credits towards their full degree. 
That way, once they go into their full, first full year of university, they would have already have 2.5 degrees under their belt. The next one is purely the English language learning program, which is our what we call our English language certificate program. There's 10 levels <coughs> from beginner to advanced. Each level is about seven weeks in length. Uh, we have six different start dates, so it's very flexible. So this is for student, students who are just looking to do English. Um, and then once they complete level nine and 10, then they can start their uh, regular university courses without having to do another test for IELTS or TOEFL. And the next one is one of my favorite ones to kind of showcase what we have offered uh, besides just academics. So this one is food. As I mentioned, we are very proud of what we offer to our students in terms of fueling them uh, nutrition. And uh, here is a short clip of uh, what we offer. As you can see, it's not just your regular burger and fries or pizza every single day. Uh, we do have a large variety of different types of food. As we understand, you know, not only do we have domestic students, we have international students who might feel, you know, homesick or anything like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So we want to make sure everyone is well taken care of. And of course, you don't want to eat the same thing every single day. So we do, uh, our executive chef and their team do make something different, you know, essentially every week to satisfy our students. It's open early and closes late. It's great for students who are, you know, studying for exams or have a late class. They can always come by and grab something to eat as well. Uh, not only do we have our main courses, uh, we have our specials, uh, you know, we have our desserts. We have two bakeries on campus. We have seven different dining halls. We have 13 different coffee houses. We have food trucks coming into our campus all the time. And also a good thing about our meal plan is that the student can use their meal plan outside of the campus as well. So we have partnered with restaurants outside of the campus. So if the student's going to the movies on a Friday night, for example, they can go out, have a great dinner, and then go to movies without really worrying about having to pay cash or anything like that because they can use their student card or their meal plan to pay for it. Um, in terms of residence, I quickly mentioned earlier, we do have different types of floor plans. Uh, so singles, doubles, triples, and quads. It really depends on what the student's looking for. We also try to group our students together. So if you're in, uh, you know, faculty of arts, for example, you'll be surrounded by art students so that if you're studying for tests or exams or doing presentations, you don't have to walk across the campus to find your classmates. You're conveniently located in the same building. Talking about walking across campus, our campus is not super huge. It's not super small either. Uh, so from one end to another, you can walk there about 10 minutes and within the campus is really car free except for buses. So uh, there's no small cars or private cars or anything like that. So students are quite safe to walk around campus without really worry about anything. In terms of athletics, uh, we have recently renovated our gym. Uh, so is state of the art facilities. We have different varsity sports for those who are interested in trying out for varsity sports. Uh, we also have intramurals just for students who want to try something new, uh, recreational programs, or if they just don't have time for varsity, for example, but they still want to be competitive, uh, there are programs for that as well. It's a great way. It's another great way to meet new students, meet new friends, and do something you really enjoy or really just try something new. There are definitely other ways for students to get involved as well. We have over 200 different clubs for those who are, might not be too interested in sports. Uh, we have ways to get you involved within the community to help others. And also we have our student associations where our students' voices will be heard in case if there's any changes or anything like that they wanna see happening around the campus. So that is the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for your time. As you can see on the bottom right, we have our social media. So if you're interested or if any students are interested, they can definitely follow us, which will definitely give them a better sense of what our campus looks like as well. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation, David. No problem. Uh,
Yeah, we'll just go on to uh, the question and answer session right away. Uh, I'll be sharing my screen. We have uh, some, some of the questions that have been sent in earlier. Of course. So we'll just uh, go back there. Okay. Okay, so uh, we'll start with the first one. I think you addressed this uh, during your presentation, but it's uh, okay to maybe repeat it for yeah, the person that sent it in. Yeah, yeah, so we're definitely ranked uh, highly within the world ranking. Uh, if we're looking at specific programs, for example, we're ranked uh, number seven in terms of our veterinary medicine. We're ranked top 10 for uh, agriculture and um, world ranking wise, I would say we're top 300 in terms of world ranking. Uh, in terms of Canadian ranking, we're ranked number four in terms of uh, comprehensive university. So we're top five university here in Canada. In our okay. 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 There is the homestay program. So someone wants so to know. We, we don't have a specific homestay program because of the fact we have residents. We do have student associations. We can help international students help uh, help students find homestays, but it's not something that we offer directly because we have our residents on campus already. Okay, uh, but then uh, is it possible for you to maybe shed a little light on how it works in case for maybe or for, ho for, for the homestay program? Well, as I mentioned, officially for our university, we don't have a homestay program yeah, because see. we have residents. So generally, uh, from my understanding, is that the international students will get in touch with our student associations. They would then go ahead and help them find homestay programs within the city. Uh, generally, what we see with our international students is that for the first year, they will stay on residence. Uh, that way they can make friends, get used to the city, get used to the university. Once their first year is finished, they will then go with their new friends, make a group of friends, whoever it might be, and then start looking for a house or an apartment that they can live together for their second year. No. So what are the study and work opportunities available to international students? Right, so student definitely, students. yeah. So I've mentioned a little bit about our co-op program. So our, all of our international students can apply for our co-op program. So if you do get into our co-op program, then you'll definitely have that co-op opportunity uh, during the four and four and a half years you're here at the University of Guelph. If you're not in a co-op program, for example, we do have work study or on-campus employment opportunities for students. They would just have to apply for it just like any other job. In our department, we actually have three or four different work study students every term. Uh, they would come in and help us with various different things and get paid for it at the same time. Okay, um, uh, a little more on that. For, because you said the regular uh, four-year program, I mean, the regular program is like four years and if the student goes for the co-op option, then they have to spend like uh, four and a half or five years. So that extra time, do they have to pay tuition? No, they do not have to pay any tuition because they're working okay. at the time. So there's no tuition okay. paid and they're getting, okay. they are getting paid at that time. Okay. So we're not okay. charging them anything yet. Oh, okay. okay. So uh, what types of special scholarship does you uh, do have? Yeah so, in terms like. of, yeah, so in terms of uh, scholarship, like I mentioned, we have our entrance scholarship, which just uh, is merit-based. So it depends on what their entering average is. So we look at their average, we look at their transcript, we calculate their average, and based on their average, we will be able to see if we can offer them the entrance scholarship or not. And the entrance scholarship is anywhere between 5,500 to 8,500 for the first year. And then if they are able to maintain 80% or more for their first, second, or third year, then the following year they will receive another four thousand dollars scholarship. Uh, so what about uh, special scholarships like uh, some universities offer full scholarship to sports sportsmen or sportswomen or maybe other kind of skills? Is there anything yeah, so like that? You usually see a lot of uh, full scholarships for sports, for example, for U.S. colleges and universities. Uh, here in Canada, at least for our university, unfortunately, we do not have that yet. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you didn't uh, mention much about the uh, right. MSc so, or PhD programs. Yeah, so, yeah. There, 
So the reason why I did not mention anything about our postgraduate programs or our PhD programs is because I'm specifically responsible for our undergrad programs. Um, so I, I really, for this question, I can definitely point you to the right direction, but I cannot give you really any answers because it's outside of my expertise. Um, generally for our PhD or postgraduate programs is something that they would, the student would have to connect with the department directly. Um, so for me, I, unfortunately, I'm sorry, I cannot answer this question. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I think you can answer this, right? Uh, so yeah, we do. Uh, for project management or environmental health, uh, I do believe we have one in environmental health project management. Uh, I can definitely double check for you right now. Uh, like I said, this is not part of my forte, but yeah. one second, I can definitely check for you. Okay, okay. Yeah, so for, proj uh, for project management, yeah, we definitely have uh, graduate student research uh, in and project management courses for that as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you have any programs in robotics and artificial intelligence? Uh, so if we're talking about undergrad, uh, no, but we do have our mechanical engineering, which will briefly touch up on robotics and artificial intelligence as well. Uh, in terms of our master's degree, um, I, I know we have our engineering <clears throat> and mechanical engineering in terms of our masters. Uh, but it, like I said, if that's something that the students are interested in, I would have to point them to the right direction. Okay. Okay. Um, people with career breaks or uh, academic breaks, uh, <clears throat> what, what does the university have for them? Uh, sorry, what do you mean by academic? Uh, like we have... Adults like uh, over 40 trying to go for uh, maybe a bachelor's program. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we, we, there's no discrimination in terms of age. So it doesn't matter if you're 18 or if you're 80, as long as you have the right academic requirements, we will welcome you to the University of Guelph. So we don't really see, oh, you have taken a five-year break. No, we cannot take you. So not, not like that. It's just whether you have the right academic requirements for us to admit you as a student. We don't look at age. We don't look at gender or anything like that. Okay. How about duplicate programs? Like maybe someone already had a bachelor's in, say, English mm -hmm. from another university, then coming to University of Guelph, can they do yeah, another I mean, bachelor's they, in English? Yeah, of course. So they can do as many bachelors as they want or any as many programs as they want, as long as they are academic, if they meet our academic requirements, that's all we look for. Oh. Okay, something on higher national diploma. Can they apply for master's degree? I would have to get back to you on this one since I, I, I am not in charge of okay. that. Okay. That's I cannot answer that for you. I'm sorry. That's okay. Uh, same, same situation here. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, I mean, uh, it will be something that they will talk to you directly with the department. Um, I can definitely, okay. uh, you know, if you want, I can definitely forward you our master's or our postgraduate program contact information. And then we can yes, I think that will help because yeah, it's okay. like we have so many people who are interested in that. Yeah, of course. Okay, uh, the official language in my country is English. Do I need to present English test again to study? So essentially, if the official language is uh, English in the country, uh, then no, we do not. Um, okay. it's, it's, it's that simple, yeah. So. Okay, okay. okay I think uh, those are the questions that were sent in. Okay. So I'll just check if there's anyone who is interested in asking any questions. Of course. So participants, if you can hear me, if there is anyone who is interested in any in asking any questions, actually we have uh, we're streaming on Facebook, so we have uh, some other persons watching on Facebook. Of course, yeah. So, well, for those who are here, if you have any question, you can ask now. You can just use the raise hand function. And I'll unmute you so you can speak. So I think uh, while we're waiting for that, I picked a few things from your from what you when you were making your presentation. Okay, someone is raising. Hand. Okay, techno techno common. 
Okay, you can unmute yourself now. You can unmute yourself and speak. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Well done. Please, I have a question uh, that is bothering my mind. Uh, actually, I joined the meeting very late. Are you into nursing program? We, we currently do not have a nursing program in our university, no. Okay. We have our medical programs, but nothing specifically for nursing. All right. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Okay. Any other question? Anyone else has any question? Okay, I was going to... Uh, yeah, you mentioned something about the entry scholarship. Uh, can you please uh, explain again, at what point does a new student didn't access that yeah so essentially when they apply to our university we meet their academic requirements so with their academic requirements we are able to see what uh, average they have when they apply to us so based on that we are able to offer them with the scholarship and we'll be part of their offer. so essentially they will get it right away uh, Yeah, so essentially, when once we receive their application and we see what the average they have, uh, we are able to offer them the scholarship at that time, which will be part of their offer. So technically, they do get oh, okay. the scholarship right okay. away. Okay, so they get it together with the offer. Uh, for someone, uh, I'm not sure if this will be within your jurisdiction, someone with a bachelor's in English, if they need to do a master's in English, Will they be required to provide an English test? Uh, for, I remember there English was a test, case like that. Well, for English test for or English requirement is based on you know what official language they have or what kind of language they've been studying in, rather than what kind of bachelor they have. So, okay. for example, if you if we have a, just purely for example, if we have a Chinese student who did Bachelor of English most likely we will still require English proficiency because we know their official language is not English. Oh. Okay. Um, any other question? I think uh, we don't have anyone raising hand again. Okay. So at this point, let me say thank you very much, David, for joining us. Thank you for your presentation.